Hello, welcome to a q and A. I got here the lovely, healthy dose of Fran. What's up? <laughs> what is up, indeed? So y'all had some questions for us, and we're gonna answer them for you. I have no idea what you guys asked, so I'm going into yeah. this completely <laughs> blind. So, first question. Are there any sort of predictions you guys have regarding Nico and Will's book, The Sun and the Star, besides one of them, or both of them, dying LOL? <laughs> and are there any other characters you think should get a solo book as well? So, I, I had joked in a previous video saying that Nico and Will are gonna die, but... <laughs> so I'm guilty for that too, but no, I don't think they're gonna die. I really hope they're not gonna die. <laughs> I think that the, the 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 fucking streets, the streets, my friend, are gonna be full of pitchforks and torches, fam. And so, no, Rick is not gonna kill Nico or Will. That would be really bad for our economy. But yeah. <laughs> so, any predictions? Um. All right. So I think Nico and Will are gonna go through hell, obviously, and I mean that, and also like every sense they're not gonna have a good time <laughs> they're gonna have to go through a lot of struggles to achieve the task they're trying to achieve which is for them to go save bob the titan i think that there's gonna be a lot of uh again in, unlike percy and annabeth with their adventure in tartarus i think that nico and will are probably gonna have even more of a what's the word i'm looking for conflict between their relationship, mm. I can see that definitely going down. I want to see, you know, some of the some of the the seven maybe if we can. That'd be kind of cool. You know, it's been a minute. It's been kind of three years since we've had a, a book. I'd be I'd like to see some. Um, uh, I'm very just. I, I'm glad to be back in Tartarus. I I like House of Hades. I think uh, I think it's gonna be a really fun book, and. Are there any other characters I think should get a solo book as well? I wanted a Percy one, but now we're already getting that, so A, hey, there's one down. Um, <laughs> I want a Leo book, because I like Leo, he's cool. Um, or actually, Leo and Calypso book, because Calypso is kind of non-existent in the last Trials of Apollo book. And, and then the next I'd probably want would be... I'd want, I'd kind of want some from the other mythologies, like the Cain Chronicles and Magnus Chase. I'd want to see some side stories from that because those series, those books are so good. And I think the number one thing I'd want, I know I'm listening a lot of shit here, but this is for good reason. <laughs> I want that mythology crossover story, Rick. Brother, if that story does not come out, I will be disappointed, you understand? Because it is such a good idea having you've had this whole pen Pentology trilogies built up for years now And if there's no story that I can read where all of that comes together in one and just like some huge Avengers Endgame kind of ordeal Dude, I would go crazy over that. That is my one. That's my one big thing. I want to see um, so my predictions are kind of similar for the uh, Sin the Star book. I don't think either Nico or Will are gonna die. I think there's gonna be a fake out death, so we're gonna think that Nico's one dead. Dies? Oh shit. Yeah, I think he's specifically gonna go for Nico, and we're gonna think Nico's dead, but then, like, in a like last minute situation, like, he appears. And I think it's gonna be Damison who saves Nico. Ooh. And, like, just appears out of Tartarus, because he's the, he's the other good giant. Um,. Um, and uh, he'll be fine, but it's gonna be like a fake out death just to kind of get everyone really freaked out um, because Rick is a troll. Um, <laughs> but I think it's very much, I think you're writing that it's gonna be a bit of a test for their relationship story. I think what's gonna be the biggest challenge is that Nico obviously has been having like these therapy sessions basically with Dionysus. I think Tartarus is gonna be the biggest test for his mental health. And also then for their relationship of whether or not Nico can get over or get through at least, not get over because obviously mental health is a very big struggle, but get through his struggles and his past trauma. I actually don't want any of the seven to get out of the solo books, uh, but I think we're done with them. I think they need a break. 
Um, I was, I don't know if people saw it in my video, I was slightly disappointed that we were getting another Percy related book just because I'm like, let it die. Because um, I think other characters deserve a bit of a spotlight. Like, I really like that we're getting a Nico and Will book because Nico's character needs more, the chance to kind of flesh out a little bit more. Also, Hunters of Artemis. Hunters of Artemis should be another co authored book. Uh, I'd also like a Jason. I, I know I just said no prequel, but I do kind of want a Jason. Uh, no, I said <laughs> no seven, but I want a Jason prequel book because we know nothing about this guy's past. I want young Jason, so like in his early years before, uh, like his early years in, in New Rome and stuff like that. Not necessarily like him Becoming around the same age as like that. More like him. Kind of, yeah. Like all that sort of like stuff. When he was like, like two years was... old at, at Camp Jupiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just more stuff about that because I just feel like we don't. All we know about Jason is that his mum left him, Juno, who gave him to wolves. At some point from between the ages of two and 16, he joined the Roman army and became Praetor. And that's it. Like, that's the most background we know. Right don't know when he got to new rome like did he stay with the wolves for years or did he only stay with them for a period of time and they took him to new rome straight away if he was in new rome who raised him in new rome did he have an adoptive family who took care of him for a period of time because like he couldn't have joined the army at age two <laughs> on to the next question which is from our buddy Percy Jackson world. Oh, world, what's up? Yo, he made Woo! it over here. Oh, shit. All right. All right. Let's see what you got for us today. What you cook up in this comment section, brother? Oh, yeah. My bully so squad say... brother. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> so they say, I guess I would ask this as a fellow Percy Jackson YouTuber. What do you guys think of the, per of the future of Percy Jackson, especially next year when the show and two new books drop? And as a follow-up question, what are your guys' plans for your channels when that happens? So, future of Percy Jackson. I think it's just kind of going to get bigger from here, if I'm honest. I think there is a slight concern on my end of, like, getting this sort of Percy Jackson burnout. You know, like, that whole situation that's happening with Marvel at the moment of, like, there's just so much stuff happening, so much stuff going on that people are just getting a little bit tired. Um, and I could see that being a possibility if Rick kind of keeps adding more things but i think like the standalone like the nick and will sort of standalone like you kind of have no bit of stuff from charles or Apollo, um but like not necessarily a full requirement but i think other than that unless like it get expanded further and there's like another five book series connected on to charles or Apollo afterwards i think if that happened i'd be kind of like i don't know if i can put up with that <laughs> because i think you can get to that level of burnout within a specific series. But I think there's still so much potential for where this series as a whole can go. Like what um, I mentioned earlier about like a full crossover with Kane Chronicles, Magnus Chase, Percy Jackson World coming into one and like doing a fighting of the big bad, like a proper sort of like an Avengers thing. And that just being like a one off situation. I think that would be really cool um, and like has potential. As for when the show comes out, like that's going to bring in an influx of new fans, which is both concerning but also exciting because like the fandom is toxic even as it stands. Um, but yeah, so I think we're going to get like an influx of new fans. It's going to expand. There's going to be probably a further increase in toxicity, but that's just the way in which fandoms work, unfortunately. Um, and I can just see the show doing really really well and kind of more stuff coming out from it so i think it's just gonna i just think percy jackson as a whole is just going to expand there is the possibility that it could lead to some percy jackson burnout but i don't really think that's going to happen because i think i i think rick knows the balance he needs to hit everyone to still continue to enjoy percy jackson and just have more people involved with that enjoyment um and i think the second question is just the fans for our channels Mine's just kind of kind of stay the same of like, I'll probably do like breakdowns of when the show comes out and discussions related to new stuff that they may bring in. So like theories on that. I'm doing like a what if series at the moment, Ooh. which is a lot of fun. Um, and just, yeah, just continue, just continuing in this current trajectory. Um, 
And yeah, <laughs> so nothing that much is going to change from me. I may just occasionally just take more breaks because there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Okay, so the first question was, what do you guys what do you guys think of the future of Percy Jackson, especially next year when the show and the two new books drop? Okay, so my thing, uh, what do I think of the future of Percy Jackson? You know what? The future, the future of Percy Jackson is, you know, despite a lot of the the, the hate of the the actors so far. I do think that the future of Percy Jackson is looking pretty bright. We're getting a, a shit ton of books. We're getting we're getting like the side stories and hopefully the little crossovers. Um, we're getting just updates all the time about the show and and the Kane Chronicles Netflix thing that's coming out too. That's gonna be really cool. I can't wait to see that. Um, the show itself gonna be massive i can see it like dude i no one's no one's ready for that for that show it's gonna be wild and people are gonna just be like oh shit percy jackson's a thing now all right um <laughs> i think that the actors were a, a fucking amazing choice especially i really stand by walker walker is a fan of the books man it has the ryan reynolds energy and as quoting what you said world actually the guy who's uh commenting this question fellow percy jackson youtuber go check him out by the way um he made a video saying like we're in the golden age of percy jackson with all the new stuff we're getting and the tv shows and the casting and you know five seasons we're probably gonna get and i could not agree more with that statement i think that there's gonna be so much awesome shit that is to come and the world is not ready. And as oh, yeah. the second question, he says, what are your guys' plans for your channels when that happens? Yeah, um, you know, not everything has been planned out yet because it's still so far away till that actually comes out. But I would love to just make a shit ton of videos on the show. I want to make a, I want to make probably a lot of cool essay videos about the show, like how I, those big, like, meaningful videos that have, like, a little story structure in it. I, I just enjoy- I, I, see, I see a lot of those for other shows, and I want to make those for Percy Jackson, because I think Percy Jackson just has a lot of cool shit in it that can be talked about, and I want to talk about it in a really uh, informative manner. Uh, yeah, a lot of just- I don't know, just- yeah, I, we'll be around. That's the simple answer. We'll be around. And there will be content on the show for both of us. Who is your favorite character? Oh, go yeah, fast. Me? That's easy for me. Leo Valdez, my friend. Fucking. Oh. I mean, yeah, he's, I don't know, he's, he's, he's the G guy. The guy was the goat in Heroes. My, I know. Simple as that. <laughs> I don't need a better explanation. You, if you read series, you know, you'd you'd get it. This may surprise everyone, because my mind changes a lot, and like, it's in the past been either Clarice or Talia. I think at the moment, it's Apollo slash Lester. That's solely, a good answer. Yeah, solely for the that character growth. Yes. My god. Yes. Chef Tiff's Rick. Like, I mean, there were still some bits where he's stupid, but like, I love stupid people. I just think his character growth is like, probably one of the best in the series. Agreed. Okay, you can go first with this one. Um, I th oh, that is a good question, actually, because I don't know. I think the only one that I could probably give an answer about is... I think Frank would probably cast as this. As the best hero because... of all time. Yes, only just because... And and, and even in this, the house of, like, all time, all the time, is because he doesn't really have that, me like like dark moments like even though like him and leo butt heads because leo does kind of bully him um he doesn't actually like he uses his powers when they're needed and he never goes too far he never goes um like, like he never takes things too far he's always kind of like in the hero stage like nothing ever kind of pushes him past to doing something that's cruel like he's always just kind of like he's just always and it's not always like level-headed, but I think like the way in which he uses his abilities 
are beneficial to more people. So I think I would cast him as the hero because he done he has done a lot of incredibly cool things. You know, that, he's honestly like my number two. Like, I I would put him number one, but like, I think you know what I'm gonna say, and but it's not for like the obvious reason. I'm gonna say Jason <laughs> is the best Ooh. hero of all time because. Obviously, what happens to him in Burning Maze, you know, is is not it is very beneficial to this factor, but not the main reason. Mm. How do I explain this? Percy's the guy to bring you to a party and get you fucked up and drunk, but Jason's <laughs> the guy to go to the party with you, stay sober, and drive you home. If that makes sense, like, he, yes, he's very like to the book. He even in like when he has his conflict, he's always kind caring at the end of heroes he becomes like this priest kind of figure keeps doing it in trials of apollo right and even though maybe not all his decisions were the best like how he lies to piper and stuff at the end of the day like his intentions are pure he died for the noble cause right like he he you know he he had a real big impact in the world and the roman and greek world Mm. It, 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 it very much, uh, I think, that Jason is deserving of, at least for me, the best hero of all time. He's just a very solid dude. When did you find out about Percy Jackson? Who's your favorite character? Do you know this moment when you're genuinely considering listening to Percy and just close the book? Okay, so there's a few things here. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. um, when did you find out about Percy Jackson? So I found out about Percy Jackson... Back when the movies came out, yippee! Back in 2010 when the, the movie came out, I didn't know that they were books. I just watched them as, in the theater as movies because, you know, when you're a kid, uh, uh, you know, you like to go to the movies. At least I like to go to the movies a lot as a kid and just watch the stuff in the theaters. So Percy Jackson was popping at the time, so I went to go check it out. And the second one. And I liked them. <laughs> And then I forgot about them because, you know, they're not that good. But then, um, I think it was a few uh, it was years later, but I don't remember what it was. I think it was 16, I believe. And I read, uh, oh, my, my friend was like, yeah, Percy Jackson's a book. And I'm like, oh, really? And uh, I kept getting told that I was stupid back then. And the people had to kept telling me I had to read. And I was like, okay. And, I'll re and I went to the bookstore and bought Percy Jackson because I was like, fuck that. I'm going to read. I'm going to read something that I know because I remembered the movies. And then I started reading Percy Jackson and I was like, well, shit, there goes uh, all my free time. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I just got into it. It was so good. You know, uh, the rest is history, I guess. Uh, favorite character. I already said that it was Leo. And do you know this moment where you are generally considering listening to Percy and just close the book? Okay, yeah, because Percy says in The Lightning Thief, uh, you know, he was basically telling you, he's narrating to us, the readers, you know, don't keep reading, like, close the book. It's scary being a demigod. You know, if you are a demigod, then you're not going to want to know what happens because, you know, you might die and shit. So <laughs> he's basically saying, like, yeah, just close the book. And the question is asking me, would I close the book? No, because it's so <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> this shit is so fire. I'm sorry, Percy. I, I'd rather die. Yeah, <laughs> that's my answer. Good answer. Um, I think I had a similar thing with, like you with finding the book. So I didn't go to watch the film in cinema. I saw it on uh, here in the UK. We have this channel called Film Four, which like eventually is where like all the movies end up being aired like years later so I think the film had already I think it was 2013 I probably saw it for the first time on this uh, channel on TV I was like oh this looks pretty cool um was really interested in Alexandria Daddario because I was like she's pretty of the film to see what else she was in and then saw that it said it was based on a book and I was like oh that's interesting didn't think of it again and I was in uh, Waterstones, which is a book realtor here in the UK. I don't know if it's anywhere else. Um, and I just saw them on the shelf and I was like, I might as well. Um, and then just got it uh, around the time uh, 
my depression was hitting hard and I was like I need something light and easy to read and something that'll make me feel happy um boy was I wrong this series is depressing it makes me <laughs> sad real quick um <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was expecting, I was expecting like, oh yeah, this, this changed my life around, I'm oh, happy, nope, it fucking made me even more depressed, awesome. Oh no, no, it made me less depressed because I was like, hey, it could be worse. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought you read it and you're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, it was no, I similar because I did, I did then trauma bond. With the books so now whenever i feel sad i read the books again oh, oh uh yeah i also answered the favorite character currently being lester um and no i never considered closing the book um i was slightly confused the first time i read it i was like okay um but yeah no i never considered because i like reading <laughs> okay we'll, 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 we can do the next one then this is the four parter holy shit so you can read this one <laughs> and start it off all right Okay, question worm from Levy. Do you think Sun and the Star is the first in a line of standalone novels? Like, maybe we'll get a hunter's one with them hunting the... Timessian. Timessian fox. <laughs> I, I um, know that because of uh, Rick saying it in an interview. Ah. Um, they also then said, or a Piper Cherokee novel, etc, etc. Um, I do think it's definitely possible. Um, like... <laughs> I don't know about the Piper, Piper Cherokee one, unless Rick specifically brings in a Cherokee author to write with him and do most of the writing, considering obviously the controversy that has come with the fact that Rick Rick's portrayal of Piper as a Native American Cherokee character is very stereotypical and has been criticised a lot for questionable things relating to it, as well as like most of the BIPOC characters in Heroes of Olympus. Um, so I don't know about it unless he specifically brings in a Chiroki author who does the majority of the work. Um, but I do think there are going to be more standalones, like definitely. Just because I feel like there's more to do there. Like he did really well, like Daughter of the Deep was a really nice standalone story. Um, if unless there is a sequel, which I don't know if there is or not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I could see more standalones coming. I definitely, I really do want a hunter's story. I think they would be really cool to do. Um, what about you? So, do I think the Sun Star is the first in a line of standalone novels? So, no, because we're already getting a Percy one. So, that's already been uh, debunked, and I'm really excited for that. And then uh, maybe we'll get a hunter's one, Hunting Messian's box. Yeah, it'd be really cool with that. You know, uh, he mentioned that was the. Kind of the hint of what the hunters were doing after it uh, apparently the Tumesian fox from what i know is like this fox that goes around and like destroys cities and shit so i would be really interested to see them go through that and with their wolf friends like kind of because like they have a big bond with animals so how that would interact with the hunters and i'm finding a fox so that'd be kind of cool the piper one <laughs> I'd also be really down to see. I agree with what Fran is saying, how we should probably get a uh, Cherokee uh, writer to with the Rick for the novel. Question number two is, do you think Rick will return to the Canes and or Magnus, possibly with standalone novels for them? Uh, I don't think they're going to have standalone novels. I kind of don't think Rick will return to them, if I'm honest. I think he's going to return to them slightly, just mainly because of adaptations for the Canes with Netflix. I don't think he's ever going to actually write for them again. Maybe with Magnus, because Magnus seemed to get a little bit more popular. But like, Cain Chronicles is kind of rarely talked about, even by like Rick himself. Which just stunned me a lot. Um, because the Cain Chronicles is like one of my favourites. Like, there's a lot, I do have like issues with it, but... Because, well, no book is perfect. But I don't think he'll ever go back to it beyond the Netflix adaptation, if I'm honest. Because, like, he doesn't really do it now. Like, I just think of, like, all the Reed Riled and stuff. Hardly any of it ever includes the King Chronicles. Many of the blog posts don't really reference King Chronicles. So, like, there's just kind of not really much there for King Chronicles in general. Like, there aren't even that many quizzes for King Chronicles. <laughs> um on rick's website which yeah i don't know I, I don't like magnus chase maybe but king chronicles honestly probably not 
Right. Um, okay, so for my answer, uh, will do I think we will return? That's the key. Will we return? Um, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I know like I don't I don't see why not. I think that the Canes and Magnus story has so much that they can tell for it. There are only trilogies. I think there's still a lot to can tell. I think at the end of Trials, when he was hinting at the more mythologies, they specifically mentioned that Rachel used to live next to the fucking Kane Chronicles house, bro. They used to live right next to it. I think that'd be cool if they did it. I'm not sure. I think that there that Rick could do it. I think it's a 50-50, if I'm gonna be honest. 50-50 he'll do it. If he's gonna do it, it's probably gonna be a build-up to the, the the huge big mythology crossover story. That's what I think it's gonna be. Not as standalones by themselves, but to build up to something. Uh, number three from Lovey is, what do you think about Daughter of the Deep? And should they read 2000 Leagues Under the Sea first? Um, <laughs> so I haven't actually finished reading Daughter of the Deep yet. I do quite enjoy it. So far, I do think it shows Rick's progress with writing. Um, I don't think you need to read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea first. But I didn't, because I didn't want to. <laughs> um, so you can if you want to. I don't think you have to. Um, but Daughter of the Deep, is, it, it's good. Um, so I would not not recommend it. <laughs> What do I think about Daughter of the Deep? And should you read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea first? LOL. So, I have not read Daughter of the Deep. So I'm not sure. And I have not read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So Fran probably gave you a much better answer than what I can give you. But, there's one thing I want to bring out there. Alright, about Daughter of the Deep. Nicolas Cage. All right, buddy, if you're watching this, an actor I really like, he said in an interview that he'd be down to be a part of a project that has to do with 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Nicolas Cage, if you're watching this fucking video right now, Rick Riordan is making a Disney Plus movie on the adaptation to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And apparently, from what I hear, act, um, I think that the guy in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea shows up in Daughter of the Deep. And that's who Nick Cage wants to play as. Nick Cage, you can be in that. I want to see you and Rick Riordan collab. Please do that. It has nothing yes. to do with your question. I'm so sorry, but I needed to bring that out there. Um, yeah, that's my answer for your question. Let's go to the next one. Uh, what's your favorite and least favorite Riordan book? Ooh. Well, books. So I guess just like in general. Mm. Oh, books. Mm. I kind of have my answer. Um, and it's weird that I have it real quick. Um, <laughs> so my favourite is The Burning Maze. Because that is some of Rick's best Got it. writing. Throughout the whole series, that is the best writing he's done. There are like, obviously there are some small bits in there that I'm kind of like, ugh. But like, if that's the case with any book. But overall, that is the, oh god, the emotional intensity, the grief. Right. Like the the intensity of the grief and the feeling that you get throughout it, the foreshadowing that comes with it, just like there are so many layers, and it's perfect. The one that I least like <laughs> is a toss up between Battle of the Labyrinth and Lost Hero. Oh, so you don't like those two books? Yeah, well, you don't I, like I can't. Really... Oh shit, that's a hot take. No. I know. Last year, I, I, I know that's like it. kind of 50 50 for people, but Battle of Labyrinth? Holy crap. Yeah, I really don't like it. I need to do a video on it because lots of people have asked me why I don't like it. I'm like, I can never give like a simple answer because that's lots of reasons. Holy shit. Um, Lost Hero, I feel like a lot of people agree with because it's not the strongest. Um, I that's like fine, Lost but yeah, Battle of the Labyrinth. I don't mind it. It's just too. Fucking long. <laughs> so much of it didn't need to be there. <laughs> so what's your favorite and least favorite Rick Riordan books? So in general, um, 
I guess my, so the first one was my, my favorites. So I guess my favorites would be like the Heroes of Olympus and, and like the, the last Percy Jackson books and, and uh, stuff like that. Just the, the crazy like wars and shit. Like, like, like Mark Athena, House of Hades, Blood of Olympus, Last Olympian, those kind of books. I dig those books with the whole crossovers and, and all the characters and the, and the freaking the wars and shit going on. I love it. I can't get enough of it. And then the least favorites probably got to go to some of the side stories and the demigod files and demigod diaries. Like, I guess they're not really books, so I don't know if I should count them, but I just want to bring them up. Just <coughs> not, not, not the Sword of Hades. That one's really good, but Retrieve the Chariot. I'm like, they're kind of skippable. What are your favorite books to read, except Percy Jackson, of course? Um, my favorite books would be... It's been a while, because I've been just kind of going off on PJO, but... I think my favorite ones would be, like... You know, it's going to be a really odd answer. You'd expect, like, Maze Runner or, like, Harry Potter. <laughs> I honestly was really liking the, the, the Goosebumps books. I like those ones. The Goosebumps Ooh. book, the Bone series, even uh, one I fell off from, and I think Rick started it too. It was the Thirty Nine Clues. Really good that one as well. <laughs> I didn't know Rick wrote it when I started reading it, so that was funny when I found out. Um, yeah. Um, I think for me, so like things I've been reading at the moment are the T.J. Young and the Orisha series, which is from like Anton Bandelay, which is like. West African mythology, so obviously sticking in the mythology theme, but like general fantasy I really like. Like I've been reading Wheel of Time, which is like old epic fantasy, Robert Jordan sort of stuff. There's like 15 books, I mean, and they're like all 500 to 600 pages long. Um, and <laughs> the one that I've read recently is The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea, which is from Maggie Takuda Hall. And I really, really like that. That's like the one I recommend the most because it's such a good story it's also pirates and mermaids hey. um if anyone likes pirates and mermaids <laughs> that's me read it it's so good um rank the 15 books oh, of percy jackson fuck uh off the top of my head <laughs> fam uh <laughs> you go first because i think i'm gonna have to think <laughs> okay so i think in the future i'm gonna do like a video more about that because I'm currently mm. working on like rankings and stuff of the books. So I'm going to go more in detail on that, but I will probably talk about my top 5 if that will will suffice this answer cuz I cannot answer 15 no way off the top of my head. But I'd say number 5 Burning Maze, number 4 uh Mark of Athena, number 3 Blood of Olympus, number 2 uh Last Olympian, number 1 House of Hades. There you go. I'll give you a bigger <laughs> list in a future video. That's fair enough. Okay, if we do top five, that's probably better. Yeah. Um, number one, Burning Maze. Hey. Number two, Last Olympian. Number three. Uh, people may hate me for this. Sea of Monsters. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't know that. I yeah, like it. I, I like really it. like Sea of Monsters. No, I respect um, it. A lot of people don't like Sea of Monsters. <laughs> I fucking love Sea of Monsters, but everybody Oh my god, I adore it. it. So many people hate it, and I'm like, but why? But why, bro? It's, it's a fun fire. adventure. You've got there's stakes. That ending. I mean, but uh, <laughs> number four is probably going to be Sun and Neptune. And number five is probably going to be. Power of Nero. I like your list. You named a lot of <laughs> odd choices. I just chose the basic shit. Like, I like your list a lot <laughs> better than mine. I will say, this is why people don't like me, because my choices make no sense to them. Because they're completely aside from the usual norm, and no one understands why. <laughs> yeah, sorry we didn't get to answer all 15, but I promise I will rank it in a future video. But just off the top of my head... I, I can't do 15 books ranking. They, these books are all 
hold a special place for me. I can't just rank them. It's so difficult. Will you be doing the ranking of the Trials of Apollo series? Oh, look at that. Similar question. Uh, <laughs> I think I actually talked, just mentioned that in the last question, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, currently actually, I'm working on the script for that Trials of Apollo ranking video. Um, Probably not going to come out for a bit because I'm going to work on this video to edit right uh, after, you know, I've done this. So it's going to come out first. But then after this, I'll I'll upload the, I'll try to work on the Trials of Apollo video. And then after that, I'm going to rank the, all, the, the, all the books together. So that'll be fun to watch. I don't think, well, the question probably wasn't for me, but I'll probably do, a, I'm, I'll probably do a tier list instead of like a full individual ranking video oh. because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. I'd check that. A whole tier list of golden books. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> just which ones of like this I'll kill with fire. This you'll all kill me. This is fine. <laughs> just label the different tiers like that. Question: Which character in Magnus Chase would be friends with which character in Percy Jackson or the Kane Chronicles? And have you seen these Netflix shows called Stranger Things and Dark? So you can answer this one first if you'd like. Okay. Um, so, I think Magnus is more likely to be friends with Hazel, Piper, maybe Jason. And this may surprise people a lot, and maybe Frank as well, just because I think they have the same energy. Like, I know Magnus is, like, Chasm Central. He's also a very chilled character, like, he's not... He's not, like, too much. Like, he's the right level of sass that doesn't kind of get frustrating. Um, and he's just, I don't know, he's just hes just a really chill person. And Jason, Piper, Frank, and Hazel are kind of, like, the embodiment of that as well. Like, Piper has her moments, but they're all very chill characters as well. I just feel like their energies would match a lot more. Um, I think he'd be closer to Hazel, um, just because... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know why. I just feel like they'd be closer. Just because, like, he's he's the sort of person, he's just very, he's protective of other people, so I feel like he'd like, keep an eye out for Hazel. Just because, like, she's been through so much. Right. Like, he's best friends with, like, Hearth and Blitzen, who've been through terrible home situations and terrible life situations. And, like, he'd probably see that in Hazel and want to make sure that she has a support network, basically. Because, like, Magnus's thing is the power of friendship. And I think he'd want to pull Hazel into that as well. And have you seen the Netflix show called Stranger Things and Dark? Uh, I have not, no. You never watched Stranger Things? No, what? I haven't. I'm not into horror. You've never seen uh, Stranger Things? I, I, saw, I know basically it. everything. I know everything about it, but I've never seen it. I watched like the first opening, bit, I think, um, where like... It? It's not that I wasn't into it, it's more just like... <laughs> not like it was gory, it was just kind of too much for me. Because like, I've just I've just never been good with like, the jump scare stuff and like, the horror Got elements it. that they do have in it. Like, I'm really, really bad with horror. Got it. Um, yeah, so I was kind of like, I cannot do this, because I like sleep. <laughs> <laughs> if I I'm watch more, I would have to instead. Um... <laughs> All right, so I'll answer this now. Uh, which character in Magnus Chase would be friends with which character in Percy Jackson or Kane Chronicles? Um, so M Magnus, you know what? People have been saying this for a while, and I, I kind of agree. I, I want to see this, and I think they'd probably get along. Alex and Magnus and Nico and Will. That'd be kind of cool to see, because Will and Magnus are pretty much similar, and Nico and Alex are pretty similar as well. So I think they just kind of bounce off each other. Um, yes. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. The next one is, have I watched Stranger Things in Dark? I don't know what Dark is, but I've, I have watched Stranger Things. It's a very good show. Um, yeah, that I don't have like any super strong feelings towards it, but whenever they drop a new season, I always get super uh, hyped about it. So, yes. And yeah, I think that's the, yeah, that's the last question. Yeah, thanks for checking this out. Thanks so much for giving us these questions. This was fun. I got to talk so much shop and I got <laughs> to talk so much shit. It's my favorite. <laughs> Go check out Fran's channel. Is there anything you want to promote? My book, Home to the Wild, 
Um, and just follow me on social media. <laughs> Let's go. Again, thanks for everything. And that's the video. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.